Okay, well, you know, we've been posting all these videos on calculus problems and how to solve them, and we did a few on, uh, on rocket science, just, uh, you know, for, for whatever purpose. And it occurred to me that now might be a good time to address a more fundamental question, which is, how do you get good grades on tests? And, you know, I, I was fortunate when I was in school to get good grades, and I think it's because I had a system that I stuck to. Now, the system came from many different sources, and what I'm going to present to you is just essentially been plagiarized by me from all these different avenues, and maybe a few things I invented along the way. But this system worked really well for me throughout high school and through college and graduate school, and I think the same system will work equally well for you. Now, there may be other systems out there that are also going to help you to be successful. This one is guaranteed to work. And how often in life do you get a sure thing, a guarantee? Not too much, not too often. So this system is guaranteed to work. And so what I'd like to do is kind of go through it with you. There's 11 different rules, so to speak, the midnight tutor rules of how to study to get an A on the test. And so let me just kind of launch into it, and I'll try to make this as short and as interesting as possible. So. The first, the first rule, if you don't have a methodology, you're not going to be successful. Studying for a test is a tactical exercise. It's all about having a process or a system. So without a methodology, without a system, you will not be successful in your efforts. Now, the other thing is, you know, life, there's a lot going on in life, and who wants to spend their whole life studying? So to the degree that you can be time effective, that makes a system better than another system. So the system I'm going to present to you is, is, since I'm an extremely impatient person, is what I consider to be the most time efficient way to guarantee you're going to get an A on the test. The second rule, you can either practice before the test or you can practice on the test. Which would you rather do? Enough said on that one. Number three, you know, tests are designed very carefully to show you exactly what it is you don't know. Now, there have been times when my methodology broke down. I did get A's ostensibly, but there were times when my methodology broke down and sure enough the thing that I didn't know was in one of the problems on the test and then when I got the test back and I saw I got it wrong, then I learned it and from that point on I knew it. But what a price to pay because I practiced on the test and did not get it right and I did learn what I had missed. So it's all about understanding what you have to learn and then knowing that before you get into the testing situation. Number four, never study day of test. I never studied for any topic, you know, any subject day of test. The only thing that can happen on the day of is that your mind is going to get garbled and all the information you know you'll not know. Now, you know, there's different kinds of tests. Math and, and science classes tend to have more problem-solving tests where you give it a problem set and you have to solve them. You know, other science classes have a lot of memorization and fill in blanks and what have you. You know, uh, uh, arts and science, arts classes or, or uh, arts and science classes have a lot of memorization and essay writing and uh, critical thinking, things like that. This methodology will work across all those different disciplines. But the key is never study day of test. You can do no good day of. You can only do yourself a disservice. There's no upside. There's a huge downside. So you have to learn everything by the night before. And there's something about 
having this knowledge, this newfound knowledge, and then you sleep with this newfound knowledge. There's some, there's some kind of a uh, biochemical process there, physiological process that causes you to, uh, to absorb, to, you know, assimilate that information. So you have to take advantage of that. Do all your studying night before, then your call time, you sleep, and day of, you're good to go. The day of, you can have, you know, sit at Starbucks all day because it's not important. Now, this number six here is a really important part of this system. Always transcribe everything, all your notes, and do it by hand. So here again, don't take the raw source material in the textbook and, and refer to the textbook or to a handout from class or to an old homework assignment or something. Trans take all that and rewrite it. Transcribe it into your outline. And so part of this, which I guess is not coming clear through very clearly, is you have to make an outline of sorts before, as, a, as a first step towards preparing for the test. Now, it doesn't have to be a formal outline. It can be pretty you know, sloppy, but it has to be some kind of a document that's going to give you everything you need to know. So, but you always have to transcribe everything. There's something about rewriting with your hand. Now, not typing it on a computer screen, but writing it with your hand that there again, it's like a physiological, biochemical process that causes you to assimilate the information. Um, now, number seven, this kind of gets into the, the meat of the outline. Studying starts when bounding ends. So, the first thing you have to do to not be surprised so you're not practicing on the test is to make sure you know ahead of time everything that you have to learn, right? So bound, I call it bounding the information you have to learn. You know, another way to say, to say is make sure you know what you have to know. Now, you may not know it, right, but at least you know what you have to know. That's the first step. The worst situation is to not know what you have to know. Now, there's a, that's a riddle, a bunch of double negatives. To not know what you have to know then you're in deep yogurt, right? Because where do you start? You don't even know where to go at that point. So you have to bound it. And I do this with an outline. So, you know, like let's say we're taking a topic from calculus like uh, uh, related rate problems. We get tons of emails on related rate problems. Uh, you know, so I would have related rates. And then I would just have some, you know, uh, bullet points here about, you know, the, uh, the, the uh, DP dy or dt let's say is dp dy times dy dt right so this is the rate part and then i would have probably some notes about that usually the rate rates refer to things with regard to time right i mean you could have such a rate of something else but that would hardly ever happen and then so you always want to look for time units so somewhere in the problem statement, there's going to be time units or something per time, right? Or, or something per time. And that's usually a given, and that gives you a clue then on how to go about that. So I just list all these different things out. It's like a cheat sheet of sorts. And then there's a really tough problem that I had a hard time with in one of the problem sets. Then I would just put it in right here. I would resolve it again, write it out. Once you, bind, you know, once you have bounded the information, then you can start to, then it just becomes a process of, assimilation, right? And you can either learn it by principle or you can memorize it depending on what it is or, you know, whatever. But you have to bound it first. Number eight, if you can do the hard problems, then you can do the easy problems. So why do the easy problems? Now, in a homework assignment when you have a new topic, Oftentimes, the first part of that homework assignment is easy problems. I think that's more or less for confidence building, to give you an idea that, okay, at least I can do something with this new material. It's more for confidence building. But in general, just work the hard problems. Because if you know the test is going to have hard problems on it, you better be able to solve the hard problems. And then the, then the easy problems are a no-brainer, right? They're a layup. Number, ten, uh, number nine, you have to study in a sterile environment. No TV, 
no iPod, no music, no telephone, no internet. Now you can have distractions, right? I, I did a lot of studying over the years in the snack bar when I was in college, and there's people coming and going. Every once in a while I would see somebody I knew, but I was there and I was focused, and I didn't have any other distractions. So it doesn't have to be quiet or distraction-free, but none of those things that's really going to cause you to veer off the, uh, you know, your, have your mind wander. Always start the test prep at least two days before. So that's one thing I always did, no matter what. I always started studying at least two days before the test, right? Starting to make my outline to bound what I had to know. Now it gives you, for, first of all, it gives you a good feeling because you know that there's always more time. If you really need to work, you have the time available. If you have things you can't solve, you can always go see the teacher or the professor on a one-on-one -on -one basis and figure out how to solve those problems. There was a class that I took when I was in college, a com calculus of complex variables. And I say this story only to illustrate my, my point here. I'm not trying to, uh, you know, wave my own flag or anything, but there's a calculus of complex variables, which I elected to wait till a senior to, to take this class. By the time I was a senior in college, I had plenty of other things to do besides do math problems. So I, I hardly ever went to this class. Um, you know, I knew how to study, and I had always done well in math classes prior to that. And so it came time for one of the, the uh, tests. And, you know, there were three tests, usually in a final exam. So one of the tests, and I was going through some of the problems from prior homework assignments that I had never done. And I couldn't solve these problems. And I was like, whoa. So I went to see the professor. And in like a half an hour, he cleared the whole thing up for me. He, like, cleaned the whole thing, all the confusion out. On that test, then I got like a 98 out of 100. The average was like 32. So, there's, you know, there's start studying ahead of time at least two days before. Then you have options, so to make, to make sure that you have bounded the information and to make sure that the, you can then process the information. Um, now, let me say one other thing about the the studying methodology. A few years ago, I thought about going into medicine, so I took some of those uh, pre-med, you know, uh, classes like. Organic chemistry, for example, which is a notoriously difficult subject, and you know it's highly competitive because everyone in there is pre-med, and it's a, the whole medical application process is competitive. So, now, this class was at a, a accredited four-year California university, whose name will remain unspoken. The this particular professor, who was very good, an excellent, excellent teacher decided that he would evaluate how well you knew the material. So organic chemistry is all about molecules that have carbon in them and carbon and hydrogen, usually and oxygen. And then there's different categories or classes of them and each class has some general properties. And then you react, you know, you react it with different things to see what happens. And there's a few cases where you had to memorize a particular mechanism, like where do the little electrons go? How does it operate? But in general, the, the, the process was you had to know how these things reacted with all these these different chemicals. Now, chemistry is by and large has some basic principles, but there are so many exceptions <clears throat> and special cases that violate the principles that trying to learn chemistry just by learning all these principles and then analyzing any situation from the principles is virtually impossible. You, you know, I, it, impossible to do. So, what I found was there's only like 20 different chemicals that, you ever, that, that anything was ever reacted with in this class. So you could just sit, draw it all out. You know, I just had a table on a piece of paper and I just had A, B, and then product. You know, A plus B equals product. All the Bs, the As were the different things that we were learning that day. The Bs were all these standard acids and bases and uh, what have you that you react with. And then I just met, I just wrote them all out, every possible case. So I had it bounded, right? I had every possible, it was a known universe of possible equa you know, chemical reactions. I had it bounded, I knew everything in the universe. Then it just became a process of memorizing it. So I didn't even try to like learn how it was happening or why it was happening. There were a few cases you had to memorize the mechanism, so I did do that. But ostensibly, you could just memorize it and be much more time effective. And I got an extremely high grade in that class. So. Uh, you know, there's different methodologies that, you know, ways to use the methodology in different situations. Those are a couple of examples.
And then number 11, which is not, never underestimate the power of human uh, desire. Number 11, if you can find a hot girl or a hot guy who studies regularly in the library, you will get a 4.0. And I, I, lived that, I lived that particular event when I was a sophomore in college, and it does work. So if you have some reason to be in the library for long periods of time, you will get a lot of studying done, and you will get a 4.0. Okay, so this is the Midnight Tutor methodology. It's guaranteed to work. You have to use the whole thing. You can't just take pieces. You have to use the whole thing. Start using it now. If you're in junior high school, that means when you get to high school, you'll have more effective study habits, and which will open up time for all kinds of extracurricular activities and, you know, the fun things you want to do in high school. If you're now in high school, start with it now. You can still master this technique. And then when you get to college, then you'll have extra time to party and hang out and surf and do whatever and still get the high kind of grades you want. If you're in college, it's not too late to adapt this methodology and reverse whatever trend you have and graduate, you know, your last X semesters all on Dean's List. Okay, I invite you to send us your problems, work hard, use the methodology, and good luck.